be okay with not being wildly successful at 22 years old. Welcome back to episode 105 of the What's It Up podcast. I'm your host, Pete Dill. Thank you for checking in, spending a little time with me today. I appreciate you so much. I know how busy you are. I know that you got a lot to do. So I thank you for spending a little bit of that day today with me. We had a great show for you today. We're going to get into transitioning out of college and some great practical ways to do that and how that's connected to LeBron James's high school that he started. But first, we got to talk about this summer heat. Before we get into that, we got to talk about the summer heat. Summer is here. Okay, here in Texas, got hit with a little bit of a heat wave. And that first summer heat came and it's like, oof, we're here. I feel like Memorial Day weekend is always... Uh, like no matter where I've lived, Memorial Day weekend is always the starter informally for summer, but also for the heat. All of a sudden, the earth is just like, "Hey, let's let's get it going. Let's let's put this into overdrive." Um, we've had a little bit of a heat wave here, pretty hot. But the good thing is, down here in Texas, there is some good like infrastructure. Like, there's pools. Like our apartment has a pool. Um, you can cool off easily. Um, pretty much that pools and lakes, but. I love Memorial Day weekend. I feel like it's kind of an underrated holiday. I don't know what you think about that. I love the start of summer, just new beginnings, summer, the school year's over, the, you know, oh, right, let, let's, so many things to look forward to this summer. Let's get it going. You know, the East Coast, things open up, the boardwalk opens, opens up, pools open up, everything opens up. Memorial Day weekend, so it's always so exciting. Ah, oh, like, it's fresh, a fresh start. So I always loved Memorial Day weekend. Um, so it's probably one of my most underrated holidays, you know, you know, holidays out there. And shout out to all the, uh, all those who bravely, bravely served and gave their lives for this country on Memorial Day weekend, um, because it's more than just barbecuing and hanging out. Um, so getting into today's topic, I saw a cool story about the first graduate out of LeBron James's school that he started, the first person to graduate college. So LeBron James, for those of you that don't know, started a school called the I Promise School in Northeast Ohio, the state that he's from. And it was like a fully funded uh, charter school. And then he paid or pays for the first year of kids college to go to like Kent State, like a partnership with Kent State. So he did that and started that program in 2018. And the first college graduate from his school that, you know, start when they were younger to graduate for college, just graduated this past weekend. And that's exciting stuff. That's really cool. I think that's so awesome that LeBron has used his influence, his money, his skills, his um, heart to, you know, provide education for kids and for kids primarily who don't have the same access as um, all the other kids in, in their cities. So Anthony Clater is a member of the inaugural class of the I Promise School, which opened in 2018. And... Um, he just finished his college degree at Kent State. So that's really exciting. And I thought what was really cool about this and what kind of got me thinking about this topic at this episode for today is that he said he wants to be a secret service agent. That's what this kid wants to do. Just went to co- just graduated college, you know, on this, uh, you know, on this high from from graduating through this LeBron program. And he wants to be a secret service agent. And I was like, that is awesome. <laughs> how do you even, how do you even become a secret service agent? I have no idea. I, I actually, res- I respect that so much. And I'll be honest, Anthony, if you're watching this, I thought the same thing at one point in my life. A little bit about me. I always had a little bit of a, a, a draw towards secret service or like the intelligence world, like CIA, FBI. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, Pete, that's because you watch so many movies and TV shows and thinks it's like really cool to be like, you know, being a spy and all, you know, all these different, uh, you know, th- bounce across the world and making connections. Yeah, that's exactly why. That's exactly why I wanted to be a CIA agent or FBI agent. Because I see movies or read books and I think it's awesome. And I'm like, maybe I could do that. So anyway, <laughs> I, I, I've always thought about, look, how, I've always thought, how do you become a Secret Service agent? My understanding is that you maybe have to be military or have some sort of like security background. And then I guess you apply but it is a government job. So anyway, I, I don't know how you can become one, but mad respect, big respect to Anthony for wanting to be a secret service agent. And it got me thinking, 
Graduating college is not easy. You finish school, you're in school, basically your whole life, all you can remember, you know, from when you're three years old to you're 21, 22 years old. And then all of a sudden you're thrown into the world or you're thrown into big decisions. What are you going to do after you graduate? Everyone remembers that question. What are you going to do when you graduate? If you graduated recently, you know how painful that question can be. If you don't know exactly what you're going to do, everyone goes, oh, so what are you going to do after you graduate? If you graduated a long time ago, go back to the recesses of your brain and you remember that. Well, what are you going to do when you graduate? Um, and so I thought it'd be a great episode to talk about is a transition out of college and train and big transitions in our life. What are some practical things that we can do to transition out of college? What are some things that I've seen in my own life that helped me transition out of college? And then talking about transitions in big moments in our life. Because tra- transitions are hard. Transitions can, we all know how hard transitions can be. And so having, you know, great insight and wisdom into making transitions smooth, I feel like is always good. So in honor of Anthony, my man Anthony just graduated from Kent State through the LeBron program. And in honor of Memorial Day weekend, which is always, you know, surrounded with so many graduations and graduation parties and amazing pictures and some people celebrating their accomplishments and education, I feel like this is the perfect time to talk about transitioning out of college. So in my own experience, graduating college, I was your typical, whew, I don't know what I'm going to do. I had so many thoughts of what I wanted to do. I feel like I could have went in a hundred different directions. I was lucky enough to have some opportunities to, um, you know, get a job right away or uh, opportunities to kind of go in a few different industries. You know, I, I could have continued in the sports world. I have some opportunities to continue in the sports world. I had some of the connections in the business world. And this was a lot through just my connections through playing college basketball. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I remember feeling so like tight about not knowing what I wanted to do. It's almost like I wanted to do everything at the same time, everything and not one thing at the same time. You know, I was like 22 years old. I had all these thoughts about um, oh, I could do this. I could do that. What's this? What's that? You know, what should I do? And, um, it was really hard. It was a hard transition for sure. And especially, you know, you're coming out of college, all these great moments, all these great friends, all these great things. And all of a sudden it's just like, oh, get a job. And for me, that Valley from, you know, college, friends, life, college basketball to get a job felt like a really big Valley for me. Um, and so, you know, I didn't know what I wanted. Now, I think for myself, as I look back now, 12 years later, which pause, relax. Okay, I get it. I graduated college 12 years ago. You don't have to rub it in my face that I graduated college so long ago. I get it. 2012, 12 years ago. Um, as I look back, I think I'm gonna, I want to give some tips and some things that helped me transition. But I think also some things that maybe I wish I knew. So I kind of did some research, I used my own experience and did some research online for three really great practical tips for making transitions out of college really smooth. Because again, I remember it. I remember the transitions and it's rocky. It's rocky. All of a sudden, you know, the conversations switch. I remember the conversations switch so much. Like for for a whole life, you know, the first 22 years of your life, everyone asks about school. They ask about teachers. They ask about classes. They ask about the extracurriculars you're doing. They ask about... All these things, you have all these conversation starters, all these things you can talk about. Oh, I have this class. I don't like this. Oh, I have a teacher right here. Oh, I'm on the football team. Oh, I'm in this. I'm in this club. I'm on debate club. And there's so many things you could talk about. People start sharing their own shared experience with education. Oh, I remember that. I had a class like that. You ever taken sociology? Oh, this and that. Oh, high school's so fun. Oh, don't worry about middle school. It gets better. Everything. But then you graduate co- college and all of a sudden the conversation is just like, so uh, what do you do? You know? what do you do? And then you just talk about work or jobs. So to- I totally understand and empathize with being transitions out of college. <laughs> so what is a great first step to understanding great first step we can take um, that you can take if you're transitioning out of college? Now, before I get into this, I also want to say, I think these are good transition. These are good tips for transitions, not just out of college, but transitions for moving to a new city, transitions for, um, you know, 
not prefer for if you're finishing a missionary time. These are great transitions for great tips for transitions at any point in your life. Um, these are not just specific to college. I think the tips that I have here and the kind of steps are great for any transition, particularly for coming out of college, but also I think they're relevant for any transition in our lives. Um, and I've noticed that in my own life that man, transitions can be tough. Like they can seem really smooth. They can seem really easy, but then they're not as smooth um, as we want them to be. So again, these are great tips for handling those transitions and how we can um, handle transitions out of college well and big times in our life. So, you know, life's not always as clear as we want. The plan in our lives are not as clear as we want them to be. God takes us on windy roads, that's for sure. I think we all can agree that God takes us on windy roads. And I look back in my life, I'm like, yeah, it's windy. It was never just straight. It was never just a straight shot. Like, oh, I have to do one and then I get to two and then I'll get three and then bam, I'm done. It's like, nope. It's like A plus B equals four equals Philippines equals seven equals here we go equals moving to here. It's like, whoa, this, this is, this isn't even algebra anymore. This is, this is geography. This is algebra. This is many different disciplines of this metaphor. How am I supposed to keep up? So totally always have windy roads in our lives. So first and foremost, a great way to transition out of college is to step out of your comfort zone. College is so good and it prepares you, I think, for a lot of things. Taking that next step and taking a step out of college into a vastly different environment and taking a big risk can be very beneficial for your life. I took a big risk right out of college. I went and became a missionary. All those job offers, all those things I said I could have had or done, didn't do them. Eh, didn't do them. Took a huge risk. Went and decided to go to the Philippines to be a missionary. Now, I've talked about that on this podcast, how that was a great thing in my life and God was calling me that, but it was a huge risk. And yeah, people, I remember telling people, they're like, oh, so you're not going to become a coach at your school? You're going to go to the Philippines? Oh, that's fun. That's, I heard it's hot there. Bring sunblock. It's like, oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for the advice. Like, it was a big risk for me to go to the Philippines, but it was such a perfect risk. It was the perfect time. I was single. I um, had that youthful 22-year-old energy. I had the opportunity. I wanted to do something that was fun and exciting. That was on my heart to kind of do something, not just like, get a job right away. I wanted something more, something exciting. And I took a risk. And looking back, that year was so fruitful and great. I made friends that I'm um, you know, still friends with to this day. And it helped me understand people better, people across the world, um, helped me understand cultures better, helped me understand that my tiny little life in New Jersey and everything I knew is not the only way to live and not the only way to think. So it expanded my mind to see that there's other people across the world and other people and cultures and customs that I need to adapt to and not have the whole world adapt to me. I grew a lot in that year. I feel like I made leaps and bounds of jumping out of my comfort zone. And it helped me become partly the man who I am today. It helped form the man I am today. So jumping out of my comfort zone right out of college was such a great thing that I did. I also heard a lot of great stories of people breaking out of their comfort zone, stepping out of their comfort zone, taking risks right after college, whether it was being a missionary or moving to a new city for a job or um, starting a company or you know going back to school and investing more money into school. A lot of risks can pay off. And right after college is a great time to take a risk. Now, I've learned we're always stepping out of our comfort zones. <laughs> That's kind of like a crazy fact of life. God is constantly calling us to step out of our comfort zones. There's no complacency in this life. Or there's no complacency in a life of faith. But risks become less and less the more... I, I, I think risks change. Risks fluctuate. 
of which when it's prudent to take a risk and not prudent to take a risk. Right now, a couple kids, stable job, wife, you know, things God's calling me to. I don't know if I woke up tomorrow and said, hey, I think we should uh, move to, you know, move to Africa and become missionaries. That's an immensely bigger risk. And I don't know if that's necessarily even prudent or if that's just my own mind, you know, like there are times where it's easier and times where it's harder to take a risk and to really step out of your comfort zone and make big, big changes in your life. Um, right after college is, is one of those times where it's easier to take a big risk and it's a great time to take a big risk to step out of your comfort zone. The quicker you can get used to stepping out of your comfort zone and being uncomfortable, the better off you'll be 5, 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, the more I step out of my comfort zones, the greater results I see in my life and the greater, honestly, I'm able to see myself rely on God. Because if it's all up to me and it's all just on my skills and talent and staying within my lane, well then, what do I need God for if I'm able to handle, control, and do everything so well? Stepping out of our comfort zones actually puts faith in God to say, Hey Lord, this is bringing me out of my comfort zone, but I trust that you have a plan here. And doing that as a recent college graduate is a great time to do it because it could help you in the short term and in the long term. Okay. So the number two way to transition out of college to make smooth transitions in your life is to let yourself be okay with not having it all figured out. Be okay with not being wildly successful at 22 years old. Be okay with not having all of the things you want, desire, dream about when you're young. Be okay not having everything you think you need to have a perfect life right when you graduate college. Life takes time. Life is a constant craft. Life is an art, right? Art is life. Life is art. The pressure that you, you, the pressure you might feel to have everything figured out at 22 years old is just not like it's, it's, it's not healthy. You don't have to have it all figured out when you're young. Cause here's a clue. Here's a little, also peek behind the veil, little behind the scenes. No one really, really has it figured out. The questions that you have at 22 or 23, maybe you figure them out, but then you have newer and different questions at 33 and 43 and 53. This is what I've learned. Oh, wait a second. You don't ever really have it figured out. You get good momentum. You learn from your mistakes. You get good things going. You build, you build a good life, but like your all your questions are never answered. All of the things that you are supposed to do in your life are never completed. Like the the list, the list never ends. You know, I man, that's a harsh reality. Maybe that's a harsh reality to hear. The list never ends. You know, the list of life goals, business goals, faith goals. Like, like it's never over. You never just sit in there like, wow, I did it. I nailed it. Life nailed it. Life one hundred percent a plus. Did it. No need for any improvements. I did it. I lived my life perfectly. Like. There is no end to the list. So success takes time. Good things take time. Life takes time. Allow yourself to take some time. When you're 22, 23, when you're in your early 20s, mid 20s, allow yourself to take your time. God is working on you. God is working in you. The pieces of your life do not need to be all fit together right away. Because if you're trying to control the outcomes of your life, you're going to miss the things that are happening presently in your life. It's so big to be right out of college and feel like you have to have all of these answers. And really, I feel like it could be answering people's questions about your life. What are you up to? What is this? What are your plans? Do you have this? Do you need a reference? And it can feel overwhelming. So you want to you want to have this control of letting people know, feeling like you're in control, that you have all the answers in your life. I have this, I have that, I have an apartment set up, I have one roommate, I have a job, I have this. That's great. That's all really, really good stuff. But 
allow yourself to figure it out. Allow yourself to make a mistake or two. Allow yourself to get a job and then quit. Allow yourself to move back home from being a missionary. Allow yourself to take a really bad job and, you know, a job that you really like that's low paying and to build up some, you know, some cash. Allow yourself, just don't be so hard on yourself with having your life perfectly figured out. I remember recently, um, someone asked me who was younger when he was engaged. And he said, hey man, um, I'm getting married soon. He was younger than me. So I'm getting married soon. I just wanted to know, like, how did you have it all figured out by the time you got married? You know, the house, the life, finances, this and that. And I kind of said an answer. I didn't know what I really said, but I walked, you know, finished the conversation. And then five minutes later, I realized, I was like, dude, hold on, come here. I was like, forget what I said. I was like, you don't have to have it all figured out. I didn't have it all figured out when I'm married. I don't have it all figured out right now. And so I was like, my advice to you, how do I have, you have it all figured out? I was like, I don't know. Let me know once you get it all figured out. I'd love to know. But you don't have to have it, you don't have to have it all figured out to be married. You don't have to have it all figured out to be a college graduate. You don't have to have it all figured out to be a young professional in this world. No one has it all figured out. So allow yourself to build your success. Allow yourself to build your life. Allow yourself time to build out the things that God is doing for you. You know, allow yourself to let God do work in you. Don't just feel like you're like, oh man, you know, I'm not where I need to be. You know, I should be married by now. If I, you know, I discern my location, I should be married. I'm, I'm 23 years old. I need to have a girlfriend. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pause. Take a breath. <laughs> you're not going to have it all figured out. Don't stress having it all figured out when you're in your early and mid twenties. And that also, also in that same vein, you know, don't allow the end goal is not success. The end goal is not having the outcome or the finished product. Don't run it. Don't start following that game. Don't start falling into the game, the game of, oh, well, I need to have these things. I need to have the new car. I need to have the nice job. I need to have the money. I want to have a high rise apartment. I need to have all these things to kind of feel like I'm doing well in life, especially in my, you know, my twenties. Don't run into that game. That's fruitless. That only, you know, that's just your ego. If you feel like you need to live in a high rise to be something, improve something, you know, you don't have to, you, you, you're so much more than just the things you can buy and the things that you have. So again, allow yourself to build your life, allow yourself time and mercy and grace to let God work in your life and to build your success and to build your um, things that you're left, you know, that you're doing your life. Just, yeah, have some, have some mercy for yourself, have some grace for yourself. Um, and in that disposition, God's also able to work in our lives when we're just open and not so tight on what we think we need to be. I need these outcomes to be the way I want them because if the outcomes aren't the way I want them, then I'm sad. You know, you know it's like, Allow yourself to be open so God can work in you. And then God's going to take you to places that are really going to be, you know, crazier and better than you ever thought. I mean, in my own life, I live in the Philippines. I lived in Ecuador. I went around the world. I've been to different countries. I lived in New York. I'm down in, in Texas. I never, I never flew in a plane until I was 18. I never left the country until I was 22 years old. And now all these places I've been, it's like God can take you in crazy places going to. He's going to take you all over. He's not just going to bring you to a cubicle and then bring you back to your apartment for 55 years and you retire. No, you're, God's going to bring you in adventures, but got to be open to it. Got to be open to what he has for you. And a lot of that is allowing ourselves to not feel like we have to have it all figured out right away. Okay. Then the last thing I think, which is a really good um, thing to keep in mind when transitioning out of college Sorry, let me just take a sip of tea right there. Kind of anticlimactic. Um, anticlimactic sip, bad timing for the sip of tea. But um, I think the final thing to keep in mind when transitioning out of college, and this is also really relevant for every transition in our lives and every moment in our lives, um, but it's invest in relationships. Relationships are so key to 
the time right after college. They're so key to every time in our life, but relationships are so key for time out of college. Think about this. You, you graduate college. Okay, so then the next fall comes and you're now officially not in school. Every other single year of your life, you have had people, friends, relationships built into your life. Because there are just people and relationships built into everything you do. School, extracurriculars, sports, everything. There's relationships thrown in your face. I mean, think about it. You walk into kindergarten your first day and it's just like, hey, uh, do you like basketball? And the kid's like, yeah. It's like, cool, let's be best friends. Then you'd be the best man at my wedding in 25 years. Okay, deal. Boom. Like, that's literally what it is. Like, you're just forced to be with people. And then you develop relationships and you have all these extracurricular things to help support those relationships. But then you graduate college and it's just like, what? There's nothing supporting you. Like there's nothing officially supporting you in relationships. You now have to, for the first time in your life, invest in relationships. You actually have to really go out of your way to like support these relationships outside of school. Now, obviously you invest in relationships when you're in school and you, you, you know, you're, it's not like you're only spending time in school related activities where you're having friendships and actually all friendships are built outside of those things, but like, or, you know, like friendships are built outside of them, but school really supports the development of friendships and relationships. But when you're outside of the school context, it's now a lot of that's taken away. So you have to now be like, oh, wait a second, hold on. I'm not just going to run into my friend on the campus green. I'm just going like, to run into my friend uh, in, in the hallway of the dorm. It's like, no, like you have to take time, spend time, move to the same city, be in the same city, set up times to hang out, support each other. You got you to gotta, you gotta understand that, that the school takes away a lot of the structures of relationships. And so a lot of people can graduate college and then feel a really big valley, a really big void in terms of relationships and friendships. They say, oh my gosh, I had, I had 10 great friends. I had 40 great acquaintances. I knew 500 people. Oh my gosh, it was so great. And now I'm just like working in a new city and I know three people and it feels so different. It's like, yeah, whatever your story is or was, Investing in relationships post college is so so key. We've talked about on this on this podcast that loneliness is crushing Americans, is crushing young men in particular. And investing in friendships and relationships and support and accountability is going to be so key for you as you're entering mid twenties, late twenties. Um, you know. The, there, you don't have to have 500 friends. You know, I feel like in college and, you, you know, when you're in college, you feel like you, you, you might, you know, maybe you didn't, but, you know, it'd be easy to be like, well, I have like 27 friends, 14 best friends. You could have a lot of people you are so close with. You don't have to have a ton of people, but you need to have some people. You need to have tight friends, you need to have support, people running the race with you. Um, You know, that can be, yeah, it can be, really big culture shock, a really big shock for people to be out of college and then be like, wait, where do my friends go? Or wait, I just moved to a new city. Oh my gosh. Now, like I need to meet people. I need to know people. So investing in your relationships is going to be so key. And that's key for outside. That's key for every juncture of life. That's key for every transition. That's key for every part of life. Relationships are so important. Um, Like friendships and support. Um, also just relationship, you know, business relationships, work relationships, like get used to building relationships with people, get used to being out there with people, get used to putting yourself out there. Um, now, you know, you don't have to be like a salesperson. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hey Pete, good to meet you, buddy. How you doing? You know, you don't have to be like a chain jingling, change in your pocket type sales guy, but relationships are going to be a huge part of the rest of your life. You know, community is going to be a huge part and thing that you need the rest of your life. So you got to invest in it right away. So what are some ways you can do that? You know, if you're um, moving to a new city, you know, get involved with YCP, um, Young Catholic Professionals. That's a great one. That's in a lot of different cities. 
Um, another thing you could do, check Google young adult ministries out of some of the big parishes in your city. So like the, you know, cathedrals that you're near, um, or if you just Google young adult ministries, usually some bigger parishes that kind of have some fully fledged programs that pop up right away. Um, and there's people doing stuff, you know, whether it's Bible studies, social gatherings, you know, um, praise and worship nights, there's people doing stuff. Um, you know, some cities are going to be more lean than others. Some are going to have really, really big, robust, uh, you know, uh, things going on. Like obviously Kansas city, Denver, you know, the twin cities, New York city, there's a lot going on for a lot of young, young professionals, young Catholics. But, you know, I, I can't speak to, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what Atlanta's like. I don't know. Maybe it's going popping off. I don't know. I just don't personally know. But we're at, what I do know is that wherever you land, getting involved with your parish, getting involved with your local parish, your cathedral parish, like your kind of main, uh, you know, hub parish, and getting and getting involved with your ministries there, that's a great way to do it. YCP is a great way um, to meet people both in a professional networking environment and also like a personal networking environment. Um. And then I think also, you know, volunteering, like putting yourself out there. This is a hard one, but putting yourself out there, showing up to places. Hey, my name is Pete. I'm here to help. And people go, oh, oh, hi, Pete. Hey, grab an apron. Here's a name tag. And you're just like, hey, you know, that could be really hard. But volunteering is a great way to meet people. You're meeting like-minded kind of, you know, people who share the same values as you on um, people. And something I'll say is that it's never... You know, relationships, friendships, community, I'm kind of throwing these around, but it, it, it's it's never like perfect, just like we were talking about in the last point. Like what I found is that, you know, sometimes you meet someone or you, you know, then you meet the friend of a friend or you meet someone who puts you on to a group or um, you go to a group, you meet two people there. Like nothing's ever just like you go to one thing and all of a sudden you have 40 friends, you have 40 people to support you. You have a huge community. It's not really how it works. Building your support system takes time. Building relationships takes time. Building friendships takes time. Um, and you know, this is so, so allow yourself to take time. This is all, this is for, you know, maybe people moving to a new place where they don't know people, but you know, the, the other side of the spectrum is true. Like if you're going back home, if you are kind of being reigniting some relationships with middle school, elementary school, high school buddies, that's good too. You know, like re reigniting those relationships is great too. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's not like, okay, great. We can pick up where we left off. Maybe it's like, Hey, let's get involved. Something. Let's join a softball league. Let's go volunteer. Let's bring some new people into this crew. I don't, I don't know what it is, but um, it doesn't just have to be like, great, we're all back in our hometown and we can just kind of kick it like we used to. That's cool if you want that. But there's also ways to kind of um, support being in your mid-20s. That's going to help support your way of life now more than when you were like 15 or 16 or, you know, 19. So um, that that's why, you know, I'm, I'm not really trying to talk specifically about how to build a community the belief is investing in relationships. You got to invest in relationships. You got to invest in relationships. It's going to help you personally. It's going to help you professionally. Um, and you got to get out there. You got to put yourself out there to invest in these relationships. And that can be hard. And, you know, I, I'm a pretty extroverted guy. And, you know, I would say I'm, I have a soft skills for building relationships. But even I, you know, I'm not just like, oh, I love just going to a new place and shaking everyone's hand out. Even takes, you know, it takes me time to warm up to people and takes me time to kind of, you know, you know, being the only, you don't know anyone in a room. No, I mean, does anyone love that feeling of not knowing anyone in a room? I don't know, but, um, I do know that investing in relationships has proven to be a great thing and helped me in every stage of my life. Um, and, and actually this is one that I actually wish I did better when I was 22, 23. I definitely made a lot of great relationships or friendships while I was doing missionary work and stuff. Um, but I, I, I didn't know where I fit into, um, like, I didn't know how to take some of these things that I learned, like that I know now when I was in like 24, 25, 
um, in terms of like putting myself out there. I maybe should have put myself out there a little more. Um, like I should have volunteered more. I should have maybe gotten involved with things more. I think I was a little more like on my own um, in my maybe early mid twenties than I than I should have been. I probably should have invested more into things and people at that age. Now, as I started to do that in my mid twenties, you know, I, I saw the results of it. So, but that's why I know this is important. Invest in relationships right away. You know, if you're moving to a new place, if you're moving back home, if you're going to grad school, whatever, whatever it is, invest in relationships. And relationships are such a big part of every step of our life. Work, personal, life, friends, family. Relationships are so important. So, so those are three strategies, tips, helpful hints, advice for transitioning out of college and any transition you're having in your life. Um, hope that's helpful. Hope this was fun. Hope this was a, uh, you know, good episode that you're able to kind of think about, talk about, if you have any thoughts, any, um, things that you've seen in your life that's been good for you in transitions, leave me a comment, DM me, text me, email me. If you are going through a transition in your life, if you're graduating college right now, reach out to me. Let me know your experience, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're looking to do, what your thoughts are. Do these tips help? Do you have your own strategies? I'd love to hear from you. And, you know, um, if you have any other general thoughts about de- le- trusting God more with transitions or how we can trust God through transitions, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys, as always. Love you guys. You guys are so amazing. At, you know, all you who watch and listen and reach out. Um, it just is so, so great to connect with you in this capacity and through this podcast. So um, appreciate you guys as always. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, um, and Reach out to me if you have any thoughts, questions like we talked about, any comments. I'd love to hear from you. So thank you guys as always. Talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.